Welcome to the Rural Recharge, a podcast of the Florida Farm Bureau Federation. Rural Recharge is a guided conversation that allows you to cut through the noise and multitude of information out there. You should be able to trust your sources, which is why we're a platform that comes straight from the source, the farmers and ranchers growing what we eat, wear, and use every day. Our guests today are Kelly and Maggie Mosley, co-owner and operators of Amazing Grace Family Farms and director of the Florida Florida Agritourism Association. Kelly and her husband attended a breakout session at Florida Farm Bureau's Young Farmer and Ranchers Conference in 2012, and that's where Amazing Grace Family Farms began. Now, Kelly's expertise in agritourism has given her a platform to lead others through the Florida Agritourism Association while maintaining the crop maze. Thank y'all for being here today. It's good to have you, Kelly. We're excited. We're excited to be here. And Maggie, it's good to have you too. Tag along. Good to be here too. <laughs> well, good to have you both. You know, Kelly, tell us a little bit about your background story on your family's farm and how you got to where you are now. So Justin and I, uh, my husband, and um, we've been married since 2004. Wow. And we um, actually both grew up in agriculture. Uh, Maggie is the sixth generation to live on my family's farm, but Justin's family also has roots in agriculture as well. They had um, a small family farm in Middleburg. Our, my family's farm was between Middleburg and Keystone. And so um, it's been in our family for a long time. And so I grew up there and I was involved in 4-H growing up. And so that kind of, that experience led me to want to pursue a degree in ag education at the University of Florida. And so after I graduated from UF, I came back home to Clay County to teach agriculture for about four years and then I ended up in the career and technical education office where I work with about 120 career and tech ed teachers in Clay County across the school district and Justin he works for AT&T and so and then we have our family farm that we work on that has um, a small cattle um, cattle herd there and then timber and then we have the Amazing Grace family farms which Um, We can talk a little bit more later, but we were in Lake Asbury, which is a very highly populated, fast-growing area in Clay County, and so we've actually had to to move the farm out closer to our family farm, which has been a huge blessing. Oh, very good. Maggie, tell me a little bit about yourself. How old are you? Where do you go to school? What are your aspirations? What are your ambitions? What do you do? How do you participate in the farm? So I'm 14. I'm going into ninth grade next year. I'll be at Clay High. When the farm started, I was five years old, and I've been working there since I was five. When I was five, I just picked up trash, I fed animals, I watered the plants. But now I cashier, I help Miss Leanne with the employees, and I do things like that now. Well, very good, very good. Are you in, What are you involved in, in in school? So in school, I'm in FFA. I was in middle school, and I will be in high school. I'm in 4-H, which isn't through school, but still, and I play volleyball. Well, very good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for being here today. That's a great thing. Now, the name of the of this particular business venture is Amazing Grace Family Farms. Why do you refer to it as Amazing Grace, Kelly? Whenever we first started, we when we were trying to think of a name, we thought about like what are the three things that are the most important to us? So, our faith, our family, and then farming. Okay. So, whenever you think about Amazing Grace, um, you know, we are just uh, that is such a that is the foundation of our family, and we are um, believers in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross and died on the cross for our sins. Amen. So that was the first thing that we wanted to make sure that that people were aware of. And then family, uh, Maggie's middle name is Grace, oh, so that amen. kind of represents the family part of that. And then AG is short for agriculture, <laughs> so that ties in the farming piece. So after we were talking through it, we um, we just felt like amazing Grace, because at the time, it's not like we could have a family name. We weren't on our family farm, and so we didn't really want to go that route, and so that's how the amazing Grace name came to be. Uh, we started out with it was amazing grace crop maze because when we first started it we just did the fall season and we did and um, we grew the sorghum for the crop maze we don't grow corn so that's why we didn't call it a corn maze and but we've since expanded to spring season and we do stuff year round and so that's how the evolution of amazing grace family farms came to be that's 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 amazing in and of itself and i didn't know all the ties to it back to it to ag to 
and you know, my life's priorities are faith, family, and farm. And that's a lot of us in agriculture, mm-hmm. it is. And faith is definitely the most important thing. But you do you see it as an opportunity as a ministry, not just on top of being a uh, business venture? Absolutely. Our mission at Amazing Grace Family Farms is to provide a place where families can come spend time together, multiple generations on the farm together, and they can enjoy this great blessing that God has given with his creation and nature and all the animals. So um, it has been a a ministry for us, even though it is a business. um, It is, you know, it is it is a business. But in terms of a ministry, we also have the opportunity. We employ about 90 teenagers um, every season. And a lot of times, that's their first job and so we have that opportunity to pour into them and to try to to try to set them up on a path and and be good employers to them so that whenever they leave the farm um, and they and they all do but that they have had a good experience right. and they know what good employers are like and, and that kind of thing so so those two ways yes it has it has been a ministry absolutely uh, amen what has been the biggest accomplishment since beginning Amazing Grace? So we, we've we been very fortunate to um, be recognized through Florida Farm Bureau, American Farm Bureau, through different awards like Best Crop Maze or things like that. But as, as I was thinking about it this week, we had a um, – we lost a lady that's part of our ag community. Her family is very involved in our fair and um, she passed away over the weekend, and her family has been sharing pictures of her. Um, her birthday was actually this week as well. And as I was flipping through those pictures, one of the pictures that they shared was of her and her husband and her grandchildren at our farm in the sunflowers. And so to me, whenever we, we see things like that, you know, I know that what we're doing is hard, but it is important because even though she is no longer here with us on this earth, that family will have those memories. They will have those pictures forever. And so to me, that that's our biggest accomplishment is the, the experiences that we're able to provide these families. I mean, we've had situations where children with autism have said their first words. Yeah. We've had situations where people have come out there to announce the birth that they're having a baby in the pumpkin patch. We've had um, we've had people propose to their fiancés and things like that. And so, to me, that's just something that's that's more important than an award, and it's it's something that you just really can't put a price on. And that's been our biggest accomplishments. I guess you know my my next question would have been what's the most enjoyable part, but I, you've you kind of covered that too because mm-hmm. it is it's an you, you find it's not just a labor it's an enjoyment mm-hmm. with the community and with people. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we had um, one of our the ladies that works on our field trips because we do weekday field trips during the fall season, and uh, her husband called to tell me a story. He actually serves on our farm bureau board with him, and he called to tell me a story that she shared with him that there was a. Um, a child that came to the farm and there's like a rolling hill at where we have the new farm and um the the child just ran down the hill and kept saying I feel like I'm in a movie I feel like I'm in a movie (laughs) and so you know to us those are the most enjoyable things whenever you can see the joy and hear the stories from people and what fun and the things that they've learned on the farm and um, that's what we we love about it the most even though it is a lot a lot of hard work especially for justin and a lot of the team members um it but it's all worth it whenever you hear those kind of stories from those families you know kelly uh, that when uh, years ago and it was probably around the same time that agritourism was taking off and you know uh, <clears throat> my family has been in agriculture in the same place on the same dirt for over 100 years and we learned about the the opportunities that there were people were doing and engaging especially in these crop mazes and all I could think of we use that just as cover crop and yeah. we cut it down and mm-hmm. I don't see a lot of enjoyment in mm-hmm. that and walk through a cover crop but to to hear you talk to hear the experiences of others that have had it in the past it is amazing what people are so disengaged from agriculture Mm -hmm. when they actually have the opportunity to be exposed to it they enjoy it Mm -hmm. and it it does it does feel like a movie because it's far from what's a day-to-day reality for them with some of us it was day-to-day and we don't see what necessarily what what the big deal is Mm -hmm. about then 
Absolutely. I call it agriculture deficit disorder, ADD. (laughs) And um, actually, whenever we came home from the 2012 uh, Young Farmer and Rancher Conference, Justin and I, we were on I-10, I I think it was in Panama City that year. And (laughs) Justin's like, "We, we could do that. I'm like, we could do that, you know, with his background kind of in customer service at AT&T and my background in education and things like that. um, I'm like, yeah, we could totally do that. And so that's where the conversation started. And um, he he was like, we really need to, we need to pray about this. And so we prayed about it for like a whole month and we didn't tell anybody. And we just felt like it was something that God was laying on our heart to do. And so I went to, we went to tell my parents that this is what we were going to do. And uh, my dad loves when he tell when I tell this story, but he, um, and, and I have the best parents ever. They've been very supportive. They've met, never missed a, a cow show, a pig show, you know, anything. They never missed anything of Maggie's and, um, they're just really supportive. But my dad, and this was out of character. Uh, he, he says, you really think that people are going to pay you to come to the farm? Like, he was just like, this is just the craziest thing that y'all have ever come up with. And Justin's like, yeah, I really think that people will. And I'm like, yeah, there's nothing like this in our community, in, in our area. There's not a whole lot of, of, of things like this. And so um, he was like you. He just... Us as agriculturists, it's something that we take for granted, and it's just like we can't imagine that people are actually going to pay to do that, but they are they are thriving for it. Like, they really have a desire to want to do something like this because they're multiple gen- generations removed from the farm now. They're, they're living in neighborhoods. I mean, what is it, like a 1,000 people are moving to Florida every day, so it creates an even bigger opportunity for farmers and ranchers who want to dive into agritourism. But, you know, it, it was – it was at first it was just like yeah and so for farmers and ranchers another thing is you can't you can't think like a farmer and a rancher if you decide to go into to doing this you have to think as a consumer as a city dweller and so a lot of things that we take for granted they're going to love a lot of things that they're going to take have questions about you need to be prepared to answer those questions and so it just provides a tremendous opportunity for farmers and ranchers who maybe want to diversify their operation, get another generation involved in the farm, um, to be involved in agriculture through agritourism. Absolutely. And I appreciate, appreciate your sharing your experience and also the perspective. Perspective is different. And, you know, I guess I get in the category with your dad, Mr. Padgett. I mean, I guess I'm getting, I'm old school, but it is the perspective from a producer, a farmer, a rancher, a, a you know a, a forestry guy mm-hmm. like your daddy mm-hmm. is very different from what a consumer may have or want or desire or have an ambition toward and that's very important that that, that piece of advice is exceptionally important sometimes we need to even do that as a as a producer mm-hmm. even from what we're doing and producing and our pr- product we need to look at it from a consumer's vantage vantage point as well but it's uh thank you for sharing that Maggie, <clears throat> I want to ask you, what is your most enjoyable part of Amazing Grace uh, Farms? So I think my favorite part is when kids come to the farm and, like, they do ask questions. They honestly don't know. And so, like, when they do, fi- like, figure it out and, like, see all these things on the farm that they didn't know before, it's cool to see, like, how their perspective changes. Because when they grow up, like, they have that knowledge from just coming to the farm. Like, when they're little... Like, when I was five years old, I was picking up trash like any good five-year-old does on an agritourism farm. (laughs) And so I walk by, and I hear this lady saying, the pig doesn't have any water. And I was really confused because there was a nip of water right there. And so I walked up to her, and I was like, ma'am, like, is there a problem? And she told me that we were starving the pig from water, and it was inhumane, and it was animal cruelty. Well, I told her that that pig probably had more water than she did. And so looking back now, like, to me, like, it was just common sense to me. But to that lady, like, she honestly had no idea. So now we have, like, a sign on everything. We have a sign where their water is. We have a sign where their feet is. We have a sign, like, we have a shade cloth. And, like, we tell them why we have a shade cloth for the pig and for the cows and goats and everything. So I think that's my favorite part of it. That's neat. That's very, you know, and that's a different between our perceptions. If you're raised on the farm, it's a totally different thing to have a nipple there, a water Mm -hmm. nipple. and. We just assume that everybody else knows, and I tell you, that's that. Sometimes I get I get caught up in that too. It's people don't have that exposure anymore, and they need it, and mm-hmm. that's where they want it. That's the neat thing. Well, 
do you have anything that you would like to try on your place? Something that you have ambition to do? Yeah, we, um, so we've had to move, this will be our third move. Um, when we were over third in the move, Lake wow. Asbury area, um, the first coast expressway, which is like an outer beltway similar to, um, that goes around Atlanta is going around Jacksonville. And so, so it came right through the farm that we were leasing over there in Lake Asbury. So we had to move from one side to the other. And, um, and so then we had to move everything home whenever our lease was over um we knew that it was going to we knew we wouldn't be there forever but it did kind of come a little bit unexpectedly we thought we might get another couple seasons in so then we had to move everything home but then God opened an opportunity where we were able to um buy about 20 acres on state road 21 from our cousins and so that was that was a third move so we're still in the position right now where we're still getting a lot of the infrastructure and the things set up because this would only be our second season um, at at the new location but eventually um, we definitely want to get into some more you pick opportunities right now we have the you pick sunflowers and we did you dig potatoes where people actually whenever they come to the farm they can dig their own potatoes which uh, my dad learned after the first uh the first comment he made not to say it about the second you know the second idea on the potatoes but you know so he never did say that he didn't think that people would actually pay to dig potatoes, but I know he was thinking it. I know I would think exactly, the same. <laughs> exactly. So, but people love doing that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and they don't have any experience doing it. So, you know, we, you know, we've talked about trying to get into maybe you pick blueberries, different things like that, because we know that um, our our customers, our guests, would love to come do that. And let me just let's take a. I'm trying to get a picture of it. You've mm-hmm. got 20 acres. Mm-hmm. How much is that committed to parking? How much mm-hmm. is that committed to actually the, the area where folks would have an experience? So uh, we had about, whenever we bought that that property, um, there was about three acres of parking. Mm-hmm. But um, everything that we have, we still like, like the sorghum that we plant for the maize, we feed it to our cows. We also use it to a, for a cover crop for the sunflowers sure. that we we plant in the spring um the 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 space that he plants the sunflowers and the uh, sorghum is about five acres and so in the um in the springtime though justin and maggie and um cooper and hunter they planted i think it was four thousand foot rows of potatoes oh wow and so that was like in the middle of the field they planted the sunflowers one section of it and then about two weeks later they planted another section of sunflowers to hopefully extend the season and so that we would be able to to sell sunflowers for for several weeks um but then so everywhere even where we um you know might have like a farm attraction or something like that we still we still have the animals there and and they can get to that so we everything is farming first you know, and then guest experience kind of attraction things second. Um, But we have had the opportunity um, to purchase some more family land. And so we're going to have more parking Um, in the fall. We had last fall, we had to limit the number of tickets because we, we didn't want to sell, we weren't going to sell people a ticket if they didn't have a place to park. So that was kind of a hurdle that we had to get over and um, some trials there, but hopefully that'll be alleviated for this season and we'll be able to, um, we'll have more parking and in that kind of situation so that we can have more people come out to the farm um, like we did in Lake Asbury. So, so you've actually, you have the, one of the problems that you have is you sold too many tickets mm-hmm. and they didn't have a place to park. That's, yeah. that's a, so how many people do you run through the, uh, we, the facility? We have, we have quite a few. It just kind of depends. Um, it depends on the season. Usually um, at the beginning of the season, it, it's not as many. And then towards the end of the season, it gets much more popular at the very end, especially when you get towards Halloween is whenever it gets uh, like our busier weekends. Sure. Yeah. Wow. What um, you, you're participatory in a lot of organizations. I mean, you're very engaged, and mm-hmm. people that don't know that do know you and realize that some that don't may not. But Kelly Mosley is involved in a lot of things, and uh, stays that way. But just just the way you are, you're a real leader. And one of the things that you're participatory in is Florida Agri- Agri- Tourism Association Board. For our listeners, I know y'all will deal with some of that, but. How big is agritourism Florida? What what kind of, I mean, 
a lot of people probably didn't even realize there was an Florida Agritourism Association board, but yes. there are enough people involved in this part in this industry that it actually has an association, has participation. How big is the industry? How big is your board? Yeah, so after the um, the Florida Agritourism statute came to be in like t- uh, 2023, that's when um, um, there were some folks uh, that decided we need to have like an association for this to – and it's part of the Ag Coalition. They work well with Florida Farm Bureau and all the folks that are on that ag, um, the Ag Coalition to advocate and lobby in Tallahassee. And so um, from according to the 2017 Ag Census, um, there's $27 million were made from farms offering recreational agritourism um, in Florida. And that was up from $11 million in uh, 2007. So that was a tremendous increase there. And so from 2007 to 2017, the number of farms more than doubled. So it went from 281 to 761. And so I'll be interested when the new ag census comes out to see what those numbers are, because it's definitely growing. I mean, when you think about tourism and agriculture are the are two of the biggest industries in the state. It just makes sense that this is something that would be growing. But in terms of the association, we have had tremendous growth, and we have over 350 members now. Wow. wow. And um, we wow. we typically hovered around 200, but the last year we've seen a lot of growth. And we were actually able to do our first conference that we just had a couple weeks ago here in Gainesville. I know Farm Bureau participated in that. A lot of IFAS extension staff. Um, there was folks there from Florida Strawberry Growers. So there were a lot of the the ag um, groups that also joined with us and participated and wanted to learn for their membership how they can be involved in agritourism because they do see it as a big opportunity for their members. And so um, we've seen that growth and then we we were hoping for our first conference. We're like, man, if we get like 150 people, that would be so great. We um, and then it was like, oh, well, people are registering. This is so awesome. Maybe if we get 200 people. Um, so we actually had 260 people registered, and it just exceeded everybody's expectations. We had a lot of great speakers, a lot of a great keynote. Um, Commissioner Simpson came. It was it was awesome. We've heard a, um, we've sent out a, a survey to the people that attended. So how we can make next year better, and so we're. Excited expecting next year to be even bigger and even better it's going to be in the central florida area next year will be around the same time frame in um in middle of july so we have agritourism operators that have um on their cattle ranches and farms they might have wedding venues they have there's a lot of you picks there's a lot of um like crop mazes and things like that that we offer but and they vary in size you know some of them are small some of them are on much larger operations so um there's a lot of diversity in our board and in terms of the operations that they have and so i think that brings a lot of strength to the organization and provides um, a lot of opportunities for our membership that's great and combining the top two industries in the state of florida into one is is a very exciting thing where do you think the future of agritourism is? I mean, you have obviously you've said you've you've identified a very key trend at this point that it's grown. Do you continue to see it growing? And if so, what kind of other opportunities may afford themselves? I think that it will continue to grow, um, and I hope it continues to grow because, to me, I see it as an opportunity for large farms and small farms to diversify their operations to add additional revenue streams and, and it's up to the farmer like if there's a season of the year that maybe that you need additional revenue like you can find something in agritourism to do um, so there are so many people that just would love to come and take farm tours I mean and I think about even dairies or cattle ranches and there are there are some that are doing that and I, I see more and more because hopefully our the next generation will want to stay on the farm and they will want to continue in agriculture. But we have to make sure that we have enough diversification, enough opportunities for them to want to, to do that. And I think agritourism is definitely the way to do it, especially when you think about the next generation and the things um, that they're good at and what they offer, you know, in terms of marketing and social media and that kind of thing. So I, I definitely see it growing, especially as, our population increases and people are moving to Florida, 
they're going to want to have similar experiences that they had in other parts of the country where they did go out to an apple orchard or they did go out um, and they picked pumpkins and things like that. So I definitely think that it'll it'll keep growing. And um, at farmers and ranchers, it's, it's an opportunity that they should consider, um, especially if they want to have the next generation involved on the farm and maybe not go take a job in town. Let me ask you this, because I think, you know, Kelly, I, I, I'm raised in farming and agriculture, and, and maybe it doesn't fit everybody, though. Mm-hmm. And, and some people's personality, you know, a lot of times farmers are – they, they're kind of private mm-hmm. and yes. they don't want to engage and some of them don't want to necessarily be exposed to a lot of public mm-hmm. uh, insight and scrutiny. Is there a, is there a way to overcome that to, is, or is it just, is it there, you've mentioned diversity. There mm-hmm. are other things that are there. Uh, is there something that may be fitting for everybody or is it just not for everybody? I think that there is opportunity out there for everybody, but I do think that there are personalities that sure. are definitely um, more suited for it. Um, there, when you invite the public on your farm, you have to be prepared for the questions like Maggie talked about. That's right. That oh, you're not your pig does not have any water, so that kind of goes back to what I was saying in terms of perspective. You have to look at your farm from the consumer city dweller perspective. I would have never thought that we needed to hang a sign up on the waterer that said pig waterer, but that was something that we did need to do because we don't want to be the next social media sensation in portraying agriculture in a negative light. So those are the kind of things that you need to identify that this, this could happen. And then you need to, what can I do to mitigate those kind of situations, and there are resources out there. I mean, through IFAS and through the Florida Agritourism Association, you know, reach out to other people who have been doing this longer, you know, networking through Farm Bureau and things like that. That's your biggest resource to say, you know, what kind of experiences have you had and how can I learn from that? And and agritourism operators, people in farming, you know, they will share with you. So I definitely think that whenever you open your farm up, you need to be looking for those things to see like how, and maybe invite friends of yours from town to be like, hey, will you walk the property with me? What questions do you have about farming? You know, that you could go ahead and put signs up. Like we have a lot of signs around the farm that educate consumers facts about livestock and and growing practices and things like that. Um, But we also make sure that our employees are are versed on it or that they know if they don't know something to go find one of the managers or come find one of us so that we can talk to a guest about what that situation might be but we try to do more on the front end of things and try to to try to limit limit anything that might go wrong on the back end I guess I guess where I was going with this, Kelly, was your dad <laughs> probably was one of the, the least probably favorable and like really somebody wants to do that mm-hmm. and it, it's not a part of his personality, mm-hmm. but you, it is yours mm-hmm. and it's Justin's and mm-hmm. you have that 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 ambition that 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 vision that that desire. How does he take? I, mean, I don't want to and don't necessarily ask for you to answer mm-hmm. for your dad today, but has his perspective on things changed? Absolutely. It absolutely has. Um, and he, the first year that we grew sunflowers, like so many times he just sits back and shakes his head. Like, sure. like I should have known, like I never should have doubted this. And he would tell you that, like you've heard, probably uh, heard, heard him, absolutely. him say that. Like, I mean, and he's very proud and he's very excited and that, and that kind of thing. But I mean, even the gentleman that we leased the farm from Amy Farley's dad, right. when we first started out, Mr. Sam, he was a dairyman forever. Right. And he thought we were crazy. He was like, you know, y- y'all want to do this? Sure. You know, we, we can work something out. We can lease this. But I, I, I don't even understand what you're talking about. You know, he just couldn't even wrap his mind around it that, that people would want to come do that. But, you know, Justin working for AT&T and working with the public and, and, and being a technician and have to deal with the, the public and, and customer service and then me working in education, it was not as far of a leap for right. us to, to work with the public and, and that kind of thing. But Even if that's not your personality or you don't have experience with that, there are people out there who can help you with it, and there are resources available to people that want to do that. So 
I would just, I would identify that as an opportunity to learn and grow, right. but I wouldn't, ke- it wouldn't keep me from trying to, to investigate this and see if that's a good thing for your farm and ranch. Absolutely. And I appreciate you have given some very helpful advice along today. And, and especially for those that may have some reluctance toward to, to engaging, mm-hmm. but they see that they, they see the success in other ventures and uh, other producers, other neighbors have done. Um, is there any other advice that you'd give that might be helpful to somebody mm-hmm. that may be really ambitious to engage in this? Maybe somebody that's reluctant to do so, but says that I have an interest in it. Anything else that you might, I mean, you've given several great mm-hmm. tidbits today. Is there anything else you'd add? So our number one priority when people come to the farm is that they leave safe and happy. Yeah. Like that is, that is the bottom line. <laughs> like safety is number one paramount, paramount number one priority and and that they leave happy they have a good experience and so farmers that are going to go into this they need to just look around the farm and they need to think about safety issues there is a website called safeagritourism.org that provides a lot of checklists and provides a lot of great resources that farmers can go to that website it's free and they can they can start there that would be my starting point as to where I would go in terms of the safety aspect of things. We also, um, we go above and beyond. We work very closely with our sheriff's office, with our Clay County Fire and Rescue. Um, We have, we always have off duty because of the nature of our agritourism operation. I'm not saying that all need need this but we always have an off-duty clay county um, sheriff's officer there we will actually have um, several just kind of depending on what the situation is Um, we work with clay county fire and rescue they always come out to the farm before every season to see like okay if we do have to call an ambulance or we do have to call fire and rescue or whatever what's the ingress egress like what is our plan going to be if we need to have um, somebody and it, it happens things like heat exhaustion things like that and so we work very closely with them. We also employ um, um, a nurse to be there to work as as a first aid station. So to me, that that would be some of the biggest pieces, additional pieces of advice that I would give people that are going into this, is to use those resources on safeagritourism dot com um, or dot org. Well, very good. Thank you. What. Some some people this this podcast will go out a pretty good distance and um, where how do people if they want to visit an agritourism operation farm in their area where can they find is there anywhere any resource that they can have and uh, locate something close to them yeah so there's several um, resources for consumers and families that want to visit farms including um, the visitfloridafarms.com that's the Florida agritourism website um, we also have an app that they can download uh-huh. um, so you can check that out in the app store um, Florida agritourism. And then Florida Department of Agriculture, they have a feature on their website. It's fresh from Florida farms, uh, fresh from Florida dot uh, org and then forward slash agritourism. Okay. So those are uh, two opportunities there that folks can look um, as well as a lot of different kids sites like Jack's mom's blog or um, firstcoastkids.com or whatever it is in your area, naturecoastkids.com, they will make lists of different farms and different things that families can go and do with their families. And so th- that's also another place to check out any kind of kid sites that keep some kind of directory. They, they almost always have a farm directory, a seasonal directory where um, – where they have researched um, and they sometimes they might have relationships with those farms. I know we've done that in the past um, where they've, they've come out and they've kind of given experience what it's like for a day at amazing grace. But so that's another place that families can go to try to check out where they can go visit different farms. That's very helpful. This year, Kelly, uh, Florida Farm Bureau's theme for 2023 is growing forward in your day-to-day role. How are you growing agriculture forward? Well, um, in my off the farm job in the Clay County School District, um, we have several ag programs. And so we have 11 ag teachers and we have lots of FFA chapters and lots of FFA members. And so in my day to day role um, with career and technical education, you know, agriculture is a big part of our CTE program. So that's a way that that we're growing forward Um, personally. 
you know, on our farm, we involve the next generation as much as possible. Obviously, our own daughter, you know, being the sixth generation to live on our family farm, who's been working with us <laughs> since she was little. And so, you know, that's that's definitely way. But also being involved in youth organizations, like I'm a 4-H leader. I serve on the 4-H Foundation Board. We just, we just try to stay involved in all of those organizations as much as possible. And, um, and so I feel like those are just different ways that we try to keep agriculture moving forward. And a lot of that focus is on the youth and advocacy and policymakers and, th- and things like that, staying involved with our community. Well, when I said it, that, how do you grow it? I knew that we were going to get those kind of answers <laughs> because I tell you, Kelly Mosley is very involved in a lot of things and, mm-hmm. and it's very important. And thank you for all that you do. I mean, I'm, you're a tremendous advocate for for our industry, for our, our area, uh, that being the northeast part of the state. Mm-hmm. And just thank you for all that you do. Maggie, can I ask you the same question? And that is, how, yeah, we're, our theme is growing, f- growing forward. How do you do in day-to-day? Do you grow Florida agriculture forward? So we did this thing. Our middle school is right next to our elementary school. So we did a thing for Florida Ag Literacy Day. We went and read to the little kids, and we made butter with them. And the little kids, like, they just learned so much. And it was integrated, like, with their science and math classes. And so that day, like, we showed them that, like, yes, like, when they get in middle school, they can take ag classes, but it's also in part of their, like, part of their elementary classes. And the teachers learn stuff, too. The teachers were like, I never knew that. And so, like, in the future, they wanted to do that, too. So it helped, like, when they get to ele- get to middle school, they want to take ag, but also they learn more in elementary school. Well, thank you, and thank you, Maggie, for what you're doing. Thank you for both being here today. I, we got a great uh, education on agritourism, and thank you for helping educate our, our listeners and the audience that, that it faithfully tunes into this podcast. Thank you for the ministry. And thank you for the blessing that you are to a lot of folks in a lot of ways. I just want to say thank you to Clay County Farm Bureau and Florida Farm Bureau, too, because uh, this whole idea came from a workshop that we went. And so I'm just I'm so grateful for the investment that Florida Farm Bureau made in Justin and I whenever we were on the Young Farmer Rancher Leadership Group um, before Maggie was even born. And then in the conferences, because I just um, there I don't know that Amazing Grace Family Farms would be here. I I feel like God has had ordered our steps to be involved in Farm Bureau and be involved in those organizations. And then there's been a lot of other people, a lot of other organizations, um, like Mr. Jesse Godbold, who's FA Jacket, um, is in the Smithsonian, and he was our extension director forever, and he was very involved in Florida Farm Bureau, and just a lot of those um, those legends that had poured into my life as a young people, Amen. and everything that that I've been able to accomplish professionally and personally has been on the shoulders of other people that have invested in young people. And so I'm just really grateful to to Florida Farm Bureau as an organization and to the people in it who have taken a, a an interest in my life and other young people like me around the state. Amen. Well, thank you again. Y'all have a blessed day.